to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, well, what we're going to talk about is the stupidity of automation. Um, what I suppose a better phrase might be why SPC always beats automation. SPC beats automation. And the center of this video was motivated by me visiting a recent client who have the most fantastic automated five axis CNC machining centers and they are so brilliant that they were able to automate the dimensional probing and then automate the adjustment. And we're gonna take a look at what happens when you automate fiddling with your process because that's what process adjustment is. So just before we look at the results that the guys were getting, let's take a look at a little theory about controlling your process. Your process, of course, will generate a distribution. If you simply set it, take your hands off it, and observe what happens, it will produce one of these. Sometimes it produces a result that's inside the tolerances and you're all good. Sometimes what it does is it produces variability that's too big for the tolerances. You get defects in the tail and you get a problem. But look at these diagrams. If your setter could see the diagrams What's the only thing they would do? They would set the distribution dead on target, dead centered, and then when they were dead centered, they would know this is going to produce the minimum amount of defects. This is going to produce the minimum amount of defects. They would take their hands off. They would drink tea and read the paper. Now, the way that this is done, of course, properly, is that you give your technicians a statistical process control chart. You use SPC. Because if you don't use SPC, what they will do is this. They will take the tolerances now. This is the upper tolerance. This is the lower tolerance, especially in this case here. And when we get close to the tolerance, they'll wind the result up. So they'll look at this result, a data point at a time. 
when the data point gets close to the tolerance like this they'll adjust when the data point gets close to the tolerance like this they'll adjust if they adjust this result here what can they only do swing it backwards and forwards and make the whole bloody thing worse how do you prevent that you use a statistical process control chart okay this has been known it's knowledge that's been around for a hundred years what this technique recognizes is the physics of your process it understands the middle of your results but it also understands the spread of your results and when you understand both you can understand when to adjust and how much to adjust if you don't use SPC you'll swing on the settings and make the whole thing worse now how about if you took that situation of making it worse and you automated it so you don't let the operator look at every individual result you get the machine to probe automatically every result and then make an adjustment automatically when it sees a data point now what you've done is you've automated the worst behavior possible at least if the operator went to the toilet here he'd leave the bloody thing alone and you'd get better product but the automated probe never goes to the toilet it never has a day off you've automated stupidity and now your process is going to create absolute chaos and this is my point about automation I have no problem with automation I, I go on to LinkedIn quite a bit and tell people their automatic system that they've created looks a bit it's a bit silly it's being used in the most inappropriate way but that's often because what we're doing is we're taking a hundred years of great mathematics and throwing it in the bin as if it doesn't exist instead of saying let's take a hundred years of fabulous mathematics that helps us to get the most from our machine and let's automate that what we tend to do is go no no we'll just automate the adjustment so let's take a look at what automating the adjustment did for this million pound CNC machining center let's take a look at the data okay so it's very simple I've got two two graphs for you with a capability study the first graph you can see you can see the tolerances the orange line and the gray line and you can see the way the process swings around swings up and down um, that's very typical of an operator making wild adjustments okay making wild adjustments and you can see that if we look at the capability study we've definitely got uh, results uh, below the bottom tolerance but we get very close to the top tolerance as well our CP is only 0.68 our CPK is 0.63 so we have a very very poor process poor capability we are going to make defects all day long with this situation that's with the automated probe and the automated adjustment system switched on so I just said to this client because looking at it I said that process is being adjusted far too much why don't you try turning the probing off so that's what they did and suddenly they got this from the same piece of machinery now don't get me wrong the, the process is sitting a little bit low we need to get that thing centered but look at the CP the CP is 146 this process could be relatively defect free with no problem at all 
if you just centered that distribution. One or two simple manual adjustments could get you to zero defects. Automation is driving you to the knacker's yard, driving your defect rate up. And there's the results that prove it. Switch the probing off if we can. Now that's what happens if you automate and disregard a hundred years of knowledge. Yeah, so now these guys want to automate because it allows them to run the machine lights out. It's a great thing to do. It's an efficient thing to do. They run the machine, leave the factory, and because the cycle times are so long, I think the cycle time for this product is about 40 minutes. So the cycle times are very long. They want to run 24 seven. They don't want to man the machine, but they need the probe to see if there's a problem, if there's an error. So they don't want to switch this off, but what they've got to do is build some sensible SPC logic into their automation. And this would be my complaint about automation. We're behaving as if manual tools don't work and that we'll just automate and the machine will be brilliant. If you automate bad behavior, you just make defects faster without any operators while you run lights out overnight, but still you are automating, um, you're automating the, the, the fastest way to lose money. You really are. So that's my issue with automation. AI, you know, artificial intelligence, they completely forget the power of design of experiments. The power of design of experiments built into AI could be the most powerful tool ever. Nobody seems to want to do that. They want to behave as if AI is a new piece of mathematics and they've thrown away brilliant maths that's a hundred years old, proven to work, proven to be the fastest way to find out. We're throwing away the capability to do this. So SPC will always be stupid automation and DOE is always going to beat artificial intelligence. Let's make sure that we put these things together and behave as intelligently as we possibly can and then with the power of automation and the power of SPC, man alive, you are gonna make bucket loads of cash. And that's what I want you to be doing.